Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing super, super well. So welcome to today's video. So today we're doing an update video on the disappearance of Maya Malete. If you guys haven't watched my first video on Maya Malete, I'll have it linked down below so you guys can watch it before this video. So there has been a huge development in the case of Maya Malete. So on Tuesday, October 19th, Larry Malete was arrested for the murder of his wife, Maya Malete. It's just been crazy, you guys. There's been so much new information that has come out. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a rundown of all the new information that has been released, a better timeline of what happened before Maya disappeared and what's been happening since then and what led up to Larry's arrest. So before we get into the video, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Sundance Now. I really appreciate anytime we have a sponsor on this channel. It really helps out, you guys. So let's roll the sponsorship. <laughs> Sundance Now is a streaming service created by AMC Networks for people that enjoy captivating storytelling and fresh perspectives. They offer the best of true crime series, dramas, and thrillers from all over the world. They have thousands of hours of binge-worthy content, so once you finish a show or a movie, don't worry about it, they always have something new to watch. So Jose and I are currently watching One Lane Bridge, and we've been glued to the computer all day long. It's a really good thriller about a detective in a small town in New Zealand investigating the death of a man found at the bottom of a one-lane bridge. It has a supernatural edge to it and I love the mystery of the show so I would highly recommend you guys check it out. So one of my favorite things about Sundance Now is that it's an ad-free streaming service so you don't need to worry about any interruptions and you can watch all these shows and movies on all of your favorite devices. Their membership starts at $4.99 a month so start streaming your next obsession now. So you guys can try Sundance Now free for 30 days by going to SundanceNow.com and using the promo code Jackie. Thank you so much again to Sundance Now for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe down below before you guys leave, por favor, so you guys can join the familia. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Let's just jump right into today's video. So May Maya Malete is a mother of three that went missing on January 7th, 2021. So for a while, a lot of people thought that Larry was going to get away with this, but finally on Tuesday, October 19th, 2021, SWAT team arrested Larry Malete at his house in Chula Vista, California. So police say Larry was home alone at the time of his arrest, so thankfully his children weren't there to witness this and go through this because I'm sure they're already suffering so much and have seen so many traumatic things these past few months. So Larry was charged for murder in the first degree and he was charged for the illegal possession of an assault weapon. So that same day on Tuesday, October 19th, the Chula Vista Police Department and the District Attorney held a press conference to talk about the arrest and to provide an update on Maya's disappearance. They also had Maya's family at the press conference and they just looked so broken, so sad, and I cried while watching that press conference. Like, I watched it like three or four times. I'll have it linked down below if you guys want to watch the full press conference. I think it was like almost an hour long, so it was just really sad to see Maya's family there. I just can't imagine what they're going through. So during this press conference, the Chula Vista Police Department and the District Attorney provided some more information that they have discovered during their nine months of investigation. And they were giving us a more detailed timeline of what happened the days before Maya disappeared and what has happened since then. So they said that towards the end of 2020, Maya was just over the marriage with Larry. She didn't want to be married to him anymore and she had been talking to him about getting a divorce and about separating and Larry was not for that whatsoever. But she told Larry, listen, I'm not happy in this relationship anymore and I don't think it's healthy for the kids to see a toxic relationship every single day. Like that's not healthy for them to see us fighting, arguing and just not happy with each other. And she told him, listen, we're gonna separate but I'll still co-parent with you. I'll still let you be in the kids' lives. I just don't wanna be in a relationship with you anymore. So then on January 7th, 2021, Maya decided to finalize a divorce and her last recorded phone call was to a divorce attorney in San Diego. She talked to this divorce attorney and told him everything that was going on and she said that she would meet him on January 12th to go over the paperwork and officially file for divorce. So we're not really sure how Larry knew about this phone call, but he definitely was aware that it had happened because police found text messages between Larry and his boss telling his boss that it was official, that Maya was done, and that she was officially filing for divorce, which a lot of people thought was kind of weird. Like, why would you text your boss that? Like, maybe you'll text your coworker if they're your friend, or maybe you would text a friend saying this, but to your boss, 
It does seem kind of weird, but they found a lot of text messages between Larry and his boss talking about the divorce, the separation, and he kind of just vented to his boss about the relationship problems. So despite Maya telling Larry that she didn't want to be in a relationship anymore, and despite him knowing that she had called a divorce attorney and was making this final, Larry still did not want to let Maya go. So he resorted to contacting a spellcaster to try to cause harm onto Maya. Yes, a spellcaster, you guys. So he was trying to do some brujeria on Maya, which I think is completely insane. Like, I feel like I've never heard of a case like that. And the police department and the district attorney also said that. They've never dealt with a case that has to do with spellcasters and doing weird stuff like that. So he was hoping that the spellcaster would cause an accident Maya would break her bones and that way she would always have to be at the house with Larry. She would never be able to leave him. She wouldn't be able to, I mean, do anything without Larry's help. I mean, the fact that he can't handle Maya leaving him so he wants her to break her bones so that she's always home and she can't do anything herself is just absolutely crazy. So police found that he was texting the spellcaster almost every single day being like, listen, when is this gonna happen? Like, can you do this? Can you do that? I'm not sure if this spellcaster is in trouble. I'm not sure if police know who he is. I don't really have any information on that, but I definitely just think it's crazy. Like, this is one of the first cases I've heard of someone trying to do, like, brujeria on someone. So moving forward with the timeline, the last message that Maya ever sent to her family was on Facebook Messenger at around 8.25 p.m. on January 7th. That same day, Larry had sent a message to his boss saying, I think she wants me to snap. I'm shaking inside, ready to snap. So the last activity recorded on Maya's phone was the following day on January 8th at 1.25 in the morning. So two days later on January 9th, the daily messages that Larry had been sending to the spellcaster about causing harm to Maya changed from, oh, can you cause harm to Maya? to now, can you cause harm to this man? If you guys haven't watched my first video, I'll kind of recap for you guys. So Larry thought that Maya was having an affair with someone from work and he was being very crazy and just completely insane over this idea that Maya was having an affair, that he actually went to Maya's work and made a huge scene and told Maya's boss that Maya wasn't allowed to speak to any male co-workers. But Larry was going crazy thinking that this man was to blame for their failed marriage. So now he wanted the spellcaster to cause harm on this man and no longer cause harm on Maya. So a lot of people believe that maybe he changed from wanting to cause harm on Maya to now this man because Larry had already killed Maya on January 7th, so he didn't need the spellcaster anymore to cause harm on her. So a lot of people have some speculation about that. So that same day that Larry was sending messages to that spellcaster asking him to cause harm to this man that was to blame for the failed relationship, that was the same day that Mary Chris had reported Maya missing. So police received security footage from one of Larry's neighbors that show Larry on January 8th at 5.58 in the morning repositioning his black Lexus and facing the back of the Lexus to be inside the garage. And the way he repositioned it makes it so that the security camera can't capture what he's putting inside his truck because it's like inside the garage. I don't know if that made sense. So now police aren't able to tell if Larry was putting something in the back of the truck, if maybe he was putting Maya's body back there, or why he repositioned the car at 5.58 in the morning. It just seems kind of random. So then at 6.45 in the morning, you see Larry get inside his black Lexus and he drives away and you don't see him until 11 hours later. He leaves his phone at home so police aren't able to track him and see where he was for those 11 hours, but he told police that he went to Solana Beach and was just hanging there with his four-year-old son and he had left the two older girls at home with Maya and he was just having a beach day for 11 hours on a Friday. Police have cell phone records that show Larry's employer was calling him nonstop that day because Larry just didn't show up for work. And Larry's boss thought that was really weird. He never just missed work without telling anyone what was going on. So the employer was calling Larry nonstop, but Larry had left his phone at home, so he never got a response back. So the employer started to get a little bit more worried, so he ended up calling Maya to see if she knew where Larry was, but of course, Maya didn't answer the phone. The employer then contacted Larry's father and told him, listen, I'm really worried about your son. He didn't show up for work. He's not answering his phone. Maya isn't answering her phone. Can you please contact your son and tell him he needs to call me back? So then Larry's father calls Larry and doesn't receive a response back. So then he sends him a text message saying, listen, you need to contact me ASAP or you need to contact your job ASAP because you're in trouble. So again, it's just so weird that he decided to miss work that day, not tell anyone where he was going and decided to just take a beach day instead of going to work for 11 hours with his four-year-old son. 
and he left his phone at home. So then police received more security footage from the neighbors and it reveals that on January 7th at around 9.25 p.m., you can hear four gunshots in the background. Now, police can't fully confirm that these are gunshots just because the audio is a little like dingy, but they do believe that they are most likely gunshots. So then at 10.34 p.m., neighbors also say that they heard the Malete children playing in the backyard and that they thought that was really weird because it was 10.30 p.m., why would they be playing in the backyard, just them? So police think that maybe Larry put them in the backyard to play while he cleaned up the crime scene, while he, you know, figured out a plan on what to do. So now the police had the security footage that revealed that there may have been four gunshots that went off that night. Police conducted a search warrant at Larry's home to confiscate all of his weapons. So they did confiscate the majority of his weapons, but they were missing a 40 caliber gun that to this day is still missing. The police are asking the public that if you are holding on to this gun or you know of someone that's holding on to this gun, to come forward now, turn it in, and just tell the police what happened because Larry's behind bars now. So if you're worried about Larry coming after you or you were scared for your safety, this is the perfect time to do it. Again, if you guys know anything about this gun, please just come forward and let the police know. So this was all the new information that police were able to release at the time. They say that they have more information, but that they don't want to compromise the investigation, so they're going to keep it hush-hush for now. So after the police and the district attorney spoke at the press conference, Mary Chris and her husband Richard went up to the stand and they wanted to say a few words to the press. I was crying so much last night when I was watching this again, and it is just really tough. So if you guys do watch this press conference, I'm just letting you know, you're definitely gonna cry and you're definitely gonna feel really sad afterwards because Mary Chris is just, I like don't even know what to say about her. Like she, I admire her so much for just doing all this for her sister and keeping her sister's name in the public. Just all the hard work that her, her husband Richard and her entire family have done to keep Maya's name in the public is just, I admire her so much. So. so during Mary Chris's speech, she was crying a lot. She was very emotional. And she just said that she was having a hard time dealing with this because, I mean, everyone is super happy that Larry has been arrested, but she just wants the public to remember that Larry is her family. Larry has been her family for the past 20 years. So she says that it's very hard to go against your own family and to accept that he has something to do with his sister's disappearance and possibly murdered her. I'm still trying to take it today. It's been really hard. He's a family. He's our family. It's hard to... It's hard to go against a family. He's been with us for 20 years. My sister did not him. She gave him three kids. And she just wishes that Larry would tell them where Maya is buried so that they can bring Maya home, give her a proper burial, and just see her one more time. This is the part that I started crying at because Mary Chris just started crying uncontrollably and she was saying that she just wants to see her sister one more time. They want the kids to see their mother again and know that their mother didn't just abandon them like Larry has been saying and that, you know, their mother is here and now they have a proper burial site where the kids can go visit Maya. Help us bring my sister home. We will, my please. We will. I still want to see my sister. I still want her to come home to us. We did a promise to her 11 year old daughter that we will bring her mom home, please. Let the kids know where their mommy is at. Let them know the truth that they'll still be brought up. And that she didn't abandon them. Healthy. She didn't just get up and leave. So I hope Larry does the right thing and just tells them where Maya is buried so that the family can have some type of closure and just, you know, bring her home. So the Chula Vista Police Department says that they are going to continue to investigate Maya's disappearance and do whatever they can to locate Maya's body so that they can bring her home to her family. They want the public's help on this. So if on January 8th you were at Solana Beach and you remember seeing this black Lexus, you know, parked at an ice cream shop or, you know, parked at the beach or you saw this black Lexus, I don't know, like at a Walmart, you know, just come forward even if you think it's not vital information or it's just minimal 
please come forward. I'm sure the police would appreciate that information. Also, again, if you guys know anything about his 40 caliber gun and you know if someone's holding it or you're holding it yourself, please come forward. Like I said, you can do it anonymously so you don't have to worry about them finding out who you are. So hopefully with the public's help, someone can remember seeing his black Lexus parked somewhere and that can hopefully lead to police finding Maya's body. So again, Larry's black Lexus is a GX460 with the license plate Meilani. So Larry's first court date is on Thursday, October 21st, so I will keep you guys posted in the pinned comment section of this video with any updates on what happened during this court hearing, and just any updates throughout the case, I'll keep you guys posted. For now, all we can do is pray that Maya's body is found soon so that she can come home to her family, her kids can see her one more time, and they can give Maya a proper burial. My heart goes out to Maya's family. I mean, I can't imagine what they're going through, and... You know, it's been nine months since Maya disappeared and they finally have an arrest. And I'm sure it's just so difficult to know that this arrest is from a family member. It's literally their brother-in-law for the past 20 years. But I'm hoping that hopefully they have some type of justice and closure soon and we can bring Maya home. I'm also gonna pray for the kids because now they lost their dad as well. I mean, first they lost their mom, but now they lost their father and I'm sure they're just so confused and just going through so many emotions. So my thoughts and prayers go out to Maya's kids as well. I hope they're okay and I hope they receive a lot of love from the rest of the family. So for now, the kids are staying with Larry's parents and Mary Chris did an interview about this and she said that she knows that the kids are safe with Larry's parents and she knows that Larry's parents love the kids so much so she isn't worried about their safety or about their well-being but she does hope that they can soon see the kids, give them a hug, speak to them because they have not seen the kids since January. I still don't understand how that happened and it's just so cruel that Larry was keeping Maya's kids away from her side of the family. Hopefully he speaks up and just admits to everything. I mean, they have the text messages with him and a spellcaster trying to cause harm to Maya. They have him going MIA for 11 hours the day after Maya's disappearance. So yeah, I'll keep you guys posted about anything new that comes about this case. And again, my thoughts and prayers go out to Maya's family. And Mary Chris, if you do watch this video, I just want you to know that I admire you and that you're an amazing sister to Maya and everything that you and your family have done to bring more awareness to Maya's case and keep it going is just very admirable. So my thoughts and prayers go out to all of you guys. But all right, you guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys can subscribe before you guys leave down below so you guys can join the familia. And definitely let me know in the comments what you guys think about this and any other cases you guys want me to cover in the future. And again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.